you only need three things, a camera, a speed light, and a wide angle lens. If you're looking for the tools and technique to get the same results as seen here, you'll love this video. Keep watching. That could be any camera that has a manual setting. The second tool you'll need is a speed light. Any brand will do as long as it's compatible with your camera. It does not need high speed sync. The third tool you'll need is a wide angle lens. That could be something between 12 millimeter to 18 millimeter. If you're new to photography, you must know these three terms, the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Aperture controls the amount of light entering a lens and is responsible for the depth of field or the extent of the image that is in sharp focus. Shutter speed controls how your camera sensor is exposed to light and is responsible for the appearance of motion in the photo. ISO determines how sensitive your camera sensor is to light while also being responsible for how much digital noise appear in the image. Start by zooming your lens all the way out. This way you can capture more in a tighter space. Set your aperture to its widest f-stop, basically meaning its lowest number. My lens can go to f2.8. Additionally, you will need to set your shutter speed to 1 over 30. You can think of shutter speed as controlling the ambient light. Set the ISO to 600. If you find that this exposure is too dark later, you can increase it to 800. I find that I always end up somewhere between 600 to 800 ISO, depending on the venue and the amount of ambient light there is. Lastly, the most important part is turning on your speed light, which will be attached to the hot shoe on top of your camera. Adjusting the power on the flash to 1 over 64 to start. You can change the power based on the distance you are to the subject. Look at these example. 164 allow me to be about 6 to 7 feet away from the subject and light them. If I was further away, I would need to increase the flash power to about 1 over 32. If I was closer, I would need to lower the power to 1 over 128. An aperture of 2.8 or wider shutter speed of 1 over 30th, ISO between 600 to 800, and flash power between 164 or 132. And show you some of my previous work and the settings I used to get the exposure. So here's a group shot. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's at f2.8, all of these images down here and flash power is around 164 at all times and i just changed the shutter speed and iso as needed and for this one i probably took one or two shot before it's dialed in just adjusting the iso alone over here we got the exact same setting so I was probably the same distance from this as I was from this. So the wide angle lens let you fit a bunch of people and I'm probably four or five feet away from them. Same thing here. Um, it's better to shoot wide. You could always crop in. Actually, this was the, actually the original image here. But then, as you can see, I can still crop in and it is still crispy. Here's another great one. Uh, pretty much same setting. The only thing I changed was the shutter speed. Just lower it a little bit and uh, you can get these cool light trails in the back. Just doing handheld. Hold as still as you can but if it wiggles then you get these cool trail but wherever your flash hit it will be sharp another great example uh this one requires a little bit more timing uh, you just gotta wait till the beat drop and then just fire away with the same setting as before lowering the shutter speed to 115 you'll get similar results at 120 even 110 here's the before and the after everything the same and the shutter speed is the same there's a lot of ambient light in this club uh, which is electric hotel that's why you're able to see all the way over here my flash obviously didn't reach that far probably went as far as this guy's face 
uh, but you're able to see here because of the ambient light. Very similar settings. Um, before, his face was uh, very overexposed, but it's not a big deal. You shoot in raw, and then you can just bring down the highlights and get a really nice exposure. Similar to the, the previous location, uh, I, although I did crank the ISO all the way up to 1000 here, uh, I just felt that when I was taking pictures there it was very dark. The the way the lights were set up, it wasn't exposing my image correctly. So it's okay, you can crank it up to 1000 and you can lower your shutter speed a little bit more. Sometimes I'm at 115, uh, over here I'm at 110. And this one I'm, I'm at 160. So you can keep the ISO at 1000 and just change the shutter speed as needed. And this is the before, after, just so you, in case if you're curious what that looks like. Wide angle lens allows you to be right over the top of someone's head and capture the entire scene. Uh, I was this close, same setting, and it still works. You can lower your shutter speed to one fourth or slower and you get these trail effect that I mentioned earlier uh, like this if there's movement in your photos you will get kind of like a ghost trail uh, you might like that you might not depends uh, you can do a little bit of each you can do some very sharp and then you can just do some more artistic so here, same setting, 110, 800. Boom, yes, it's overexposed because I didn't really have time to dial it in. It was kind of in the moment thing, but I also knew I was shooting raw, so I could just dial it back in post, tweak my highlights, and we have a good image. The stage was kind of small. That's why you always use the widest lens you have. Not wide enough to be a fisheye, but 12 to 18 should get you a similar shot and I'm about a couple feet away from them but I see the whole stage and the whole room and the settings is the same as before you do get a little light trail but it's not not a big deal I like it personally here's another great example of my buddy Paolo and Jaws at Soundbar the settings I used here as you can see is similar to the rest 400 ISO and as I'm pretty close, so that's why I didn't crank it up as high. The uh, flash was able to hit him. Low shutter effect you kind of like. You can hit the shutter and wiggle your camera in order to get these lines. Here's some examples of that. This is at half a second. And you can go as crazy as you like with this and get a lot of light trail or very little. You can get this kind right here where you can take the picture and then you can zoom in your camera and then it's it gives this warping effect in camera. As you can see, this is 0.7 of a second with ISO being 500. Otherwise, it would be really bright. And you get these ghostly images as there's a bunch of movement in the crowd or your handshake, you can get a lot of movement here you might not want that up to you uh, if you want more go slower if you want less go faster i lower the shutter speed to 0.3 of a second and after i click the shutter you can wave your camera a little bit wiggle it and then that's how you get this nice ghost trail it does take trial and error until you get the feel for it, but once you do, you can just let it rip and you'll be able to consistently take these kind of photos. Also, you don't really need to worry about back shutter or front shutter. You can still get this. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. 